friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to take a little bit of time to talk to you about why I bought Starlink. So if you've ever seen the Starlink marketing or any videos or content around it, you'll often see the talk about giving access to remote areas. As you can imagine, people that live out in the sticks in remote areas, chances are they've got poor or no internet connection due to lack of infrastructure. And that's true. However, actually, not just it's not just rural areas. So here in the UK, the government is doing a big push around uh, rural internet access and making pledges that a certain percentage of the country will have a minimum speed requirement by the I think it's mid to late 2020s. And you know, on the whole, they're doing all right. I think some people might disagree, but a lot of people I know that live out in the country, my parents included, actually have pretty good speed, speed that I would be quite happy with. Except for me, who lives two miles out of Manchester city centre, to say my internet is bad would be an understatement, to be honest. So just to give you a bit of context, the way the internet works here in the UK, you have what is called internet exchanges. So this is where internet is exchanged between internet service providers. And from this exchange, the connection will go to a street cabinet. So if you live in the UK and you've walked around, you might see these green cabinets on the street. Then from the screen cabinet, it will go to your house. The fastest option is fibre to the premises or FTTP. So this means that there's fibre optic from the exchange of the cabinet from your, and the cabinet to your house. Sometimes I believe it can possibly even bypasses the cabinets altogether. And that is, uh, I think the most well-known UK provider of that kind of service is Virgin Media. You get really great speeds of anywhere from like 200 megabits per second up, potentially, you know, really good speeds. But not everyone has it virgin. You know, they have to have put the infrastructure in place in your area, otherwise you won't get it. You know, it involves digging up the road, so not everyone is guaranteed to have it. Then the next level down is fibre to the cabinet, so or FTTC. And this is when the internet goes from your exchange to the cabinet, and then it's copper from the cabinet to your house. On average, you normally see speeds of around 70 bits per second megabits per second sorry now you know that your mileage may vary don't quote me on that but f you know previously i've had um fiber to the cabinet internet i know other people who have and on the whole the speed is around 70. not too bad you know again you know there's other factors to consider in all of this like your distance from your exchange the further the network has to travel along the wires the worse it's going to be and then the worst of the lot is no fibre whatsoever. It's copper wire, traditional copper wire from the exchange of the cabinet, from the cabinet to your house. And unfortunately, despite where I live, that's what I've got. So when I bought this house, which is a new build house, I uh, looked up what internet I could get. I was in my previous flat, which had uh, fibre to the cabinet, and I got about 70 megabits per second down. So when I looked up if I could transfer that, the, because it's a new build house, I didn't know my address or my phone number at this point, but there were some pre-existing houses on the street that I used for reference. So when I did the searches, it was like, great, you know, you can get 70 megabits per second, except it didn't work like that. The problem I had was that when the houses were built, there wasn't any planning put in place for the internet. So the street cabinet at the end of my road with the fibre to it was full when I got hooked up. So they hooked me up to a different extra, uh, street cabinet around the corner which doesn't have fibre to the cabinet and absolutely no plans to add it either whatsoever. I don't know whether it's just, yeah, it'd be due to demand, I guess, but yeah, essentially there's no plans to make any difference. So I'm seeing speeds, well, advertised speeds were supposed to be around 30 megabits per second download and about five or six megabits upload. Not too bad, but that wasn't what I was seeing. I was seeing speeds of around 11 or 12 download, so not great in, tw in this was back in 2015. So even by 2015 standards, not great, but you know, you do what you do. But I wanted to Twitch stream and speeds like that, I wasn't actually seeing. I was getting uploads of less than one megabit per second, which frankly is just not usable with Twitch. You need, they say about two or three, you maybe want five or six at a minimum to stream really. And so it just wasn't an option. So I started to look around to see, okay, what else can I do? As I mentioned, there's no fiber to the premises infrastructure around here. So that was out the question. So I started to look at mobile broadband. 
because there's a phone provider um, in this country called Three who actually do what they call home fi. So it's mobile broadband, but it's intended for home use. So there's no there's no caps on speed or um, well, we'll come on to speed. There's no no deliberate caps on speed or download or anything like that. You know, you would just use your you'd have a router with a SIM card in it, a bit like your phone, but it would be intended for home use. So I I bought that on a two year contract. You know, I was being offered speeds of of around 30 megabits per second down still, but more like, you know, seven to 10 up. Brilliant. If I get those serve, those speeds, I can stream. Wonderful. So I got I got the three home fi and yeah, it wasn't too bad. I I um you know I could stream if you if you're a subscriber to my channel already, which if you're not, hit the hope to subscribe button. I am planning to do more content soon. But yeah, you know, if you've seen my videos, you'll know that I sometimes upload my recordings of most of my streams to YouTube from Twitch. And so streaming is something that I was able to do for a while. But even before the pandemic, with more people working from home, the service I was getting was getting worse and worse. For example, three di Three's traffic management system is appalling. So the way that network providers, whether it's cable or Wi-Fi or whatever, not Wi-Fi, sorry, mobile broadband, the way they provide that service, they will offer you, um, you know, traffic management because, you know, no matter how many people are connected, you want everyone to get their fair share, right? But three took it a bit far. So if you are connected to the Microsoft service, for example, like my Xbox was, their traffic shaping, as they call it, when they kind of, you know, control the data and the size and whatnot, was so appalling, I actually couldn't reach the servers at all. And, you know, I tried various solutions and I read some networking blogs about this and they did suggest that, yeah, this is the problem. So, Liam, if you've watched the channel before, you might know Liam. Liam's like my best friend. He's a network expert working for an ISP. He's given me loads of clever industrial level um network equipment you know I, my my modem my router from three is now just a bridge and i've got a separate router a separate access point and whatnot and so what he did was he introduced a router to router level vpn so all my traffic takes a hop via his house in sheffield which is across the peak district so it's about 40 miles away through some hills not great but believe it or not despite whatever three will claim that they don't do this traffic shaping Oh, funny, when it doesn't know I'm trying to reach Xbox and it just thinks I'm going to Sheffield. Oh, look, Xbox is back. But the speeds are still atrocious. You know, 30 megabits per second down is, you'd not normally see that. You normally like to see six or seven. And as the months have gone on and I've had the contract for about two and a half, just over two, two, and a, two years and a few months now, in that time, it's just got worse. Most days, you won't even reach speedtest.net to see how it's doing. You're never going to get decent speeds. My upload is sometimes all right, but my download is appalling. And it's just, you know, streaming stopped being, stopped being tenable. I got to a point where streams were just cut out all the time and I would lose viewers because, frankly, who wants to watch a stream that keeps going, either buffering or dropping out and returning? So then in December of last year, I needed to replace my phone. So I got an iPhone 12. And what was great about that was it's also upgrading me to 5G. So I've got a 5G iPhone 12 and I'd seen mention of some other people I know in the community who were actually tethering their phones to stream. So that's what I started doing. I tethered my phone. Great. You know, I got really good speeds and I could stream again. But the problem is it warms my phone up. Whether it's just the cable plugged in for the, for the computer I'm using or multiple devices also connected over Wi-Fi, such as my Xbox to download a game or any other devices. Of course, well, I reduce this number when I'm streaming, but on the whole, you know, there's always devices connected if required. So no matter whether it's one or many devices connected, my phone was heating up like a hot potato. And it's really starting to have an impact now. My phone on the whole, when not plugged in, will cool down and function just great. But it's lost 14% battery health in under 12 months. Boo. So I've come to the realisation that that's just not feasible anymore. You know, and also it's not just that my phone is getting hot. Once it gets really hot, it starts to throttle. So the internet might cut out. Or if I'm still tethered while I make a phone call, often people can stop being able to hear me. And then the phone call just cuts out with call failed. So 
<coughs> excuse me, just not feasible. So I started to look again, you know, maybe I should just consider Starlink. As I said, I've got no fiber options in my area. The copper to copper is just not, not possible either. And because it's infrastructure limitations, it doesn't matter what ISP I go with, the problems will still exist. And as I said, I looked at mobile broadband options, but there's nothing suitable. There is Vodafone 5G in my area, just about, but they have very, very, very mixed reviews of whether it will work or not. So that's why I've got Starlink. I've, as I said at the beginning, most of the footage I've seen is all um, about rural areas or people who, you know, maybe just run networking YouTube channels who bought it just for the uh, investigation. But my internet is terrible. And one of the things they say is that, you know, because Starlink's in beta, you're going to see varying speeds. So if you're more likely to get better at home, stick with that. But I'm not. Um, I will quickly stick an image up here of a speed test that I'll do for my home broadband, which um, my friend staying with me is not home at the moment, so it might be a lot better, but it's still going to be awful. You're going to see what I normally put up with. And of course, this isn't a peak time of day. This is um, the middle of the day on a Friday. So yes, there might be some work from home people, but on the whole, you know, there's not even going to be peak traffic and this is the best that I can get. So I've gone ahead and invested in Starlink. From what I've seen, yes, because it's beta, it might drop out sometimes, but I'm sure it's going to drop out less than my throttling iPhone or my dodgy as heck home connection. Um, I ordered it on Monday, the 27th of September. It's already on the way. I think it's currently being held in Germany by customs, but in theory, it's being delivered on Monday of next week. So it could, in theory, be order delivery time of a one week, which is very impressive. So keep an eye out for the um, videos. I'll do an unboxing next week and, you know, we'll give it a week and then a month and we'll do some update videos on how I'm finding it. If you, you know, are interested in watching me stream, then I'm on uh, uh, twitch.tv slash Carter. And if you see me streaming more, maybe not next week, because I've got to go to London. But if you see me streaming more, chances are it's going okay. But yeah, there you have it. A summary of my dodgy internet options at home, the poor performance I put up with and why I decided to throw some money at Elon Musk.